experience in the literary history of the Philippines. The Japanese Occupation Literary Period The soldier reading these pages would do well to reflect on the wisdom of the statement exhibited in a Japanese shrine. Woe unto him who has not tasted defeat. Defeat brings into sharp focus the causes that led to failure and provides a fruitful field of study for those soldiers and laymen who seek in the past lessons for the future. As the Japanese once part of Axis powers, wanted to be the most powerful to defeat Americans and Europeans, which were allies during World War II. The Philippines became their king. After they bombarded Pearl Harbor, the Japanese forces attacked the U.S. Commonwealth based in the Philippines, which is part of their wide Pacific plan. In order to gather much more resources, the fall of Corridor happened. American and Filipinos planned to have stalwart defense in order to disrupt the conquest plan of Japan, costing many lives, and the horror began. The Japanese forces brutally took away lives. May it be a suspected member of guerrilla or merely an innocent one. Stories from survivors consist of how fear overcame every individual. From women who tried to hide whenever they saw Japanese from afar, trying to avoid their sexual harassments. From the outcries of the victims of sex slavery, and the torture that Filipinos experienced during the deadly Bataan death march. Walang hapon sa pagpatay ng mga hapon. Hindi mo lang aakalain na may hangganan din pa lahat ng It was in 1945 when finally the battle had come to an end. Who would have ever forgotten the nightmare? The bombs, guns, outcries, fear, and rage for independence and peace. They can still be seen on the survivors' eyes and were left as masterpieces, readable from the papers of Monju. Hi, I am Lechi Valencia, a best-selling author of novels and poetry. Hi, I'm Rose, a self-proclaimed book lover, a bookworm. Hi, I am Binibini Eltea Cruz, a known critic for films and books. Of course, I have read a lot of history books and also literary works. After their colonization, they are indeed masterpieces. Nako, since elementary, probably grade 5 we discussed na yan. But since I'm not that particular with history, Hindi na ganon ka fresh yung details sa utak ko. Naalala ko pa, of course, yung death march, etc. But I have read some of the articles and novels after that war. Oh, pero personally, hindi ako masyadong mahilig sa history, but as a critic ng different literature, alam ko na napaka essential noon sa history ng ating bansa. Magandang araw po sa inyo. Magandang araw din sa inyo. Maaari mo po bang ipakilala yung sarili? Ako po si Cordelia Evangelista. Isang comfort woman. Survivor na World War II. Napakahirap ng buhay namin noon. Ang um, totoo nga nila, akala ko din na nabubuhay pa. 
bago pang mangyari ang lahat, nagpakasimple lang na ang buhay. Namasukan ako bilang kasambayan sa bayan at masaya masaya kami ang pamilya. Nung biglang dumating yung mga hapon, kakagaling ko lang lang sa bayan. Namili ako para sa handaan kinapas. Nang biglang nakahagulo. Hindi ko na mawari kung anong kakawit ko ng panahon niya. Ang tangi na alala ko lang. Ang sabi sa amin ng ito ay magtago daw kami. Hanggang sa atresado kami ang sinalakay. Nung mga habon. Atresado talaga yung hinihila kami. Wala-wala sa mga kailan mo lahat ng tao. Itay yung pinagbibintangan nila. Itay yung gusto nilang uno. Hindi ko maintindihan. Hindi namin maintindihan yung kanilang sinasabi dahil wala naman talaga kami ang alam sa kanilang lingkuhan. Pero naiintindihan ko na ang nais ng itay watig ay kasama raw ang itay sa gerilya. Pero hindi. At huli na nang mabalitaan ko na kami ay napagbintangan lamang. At si itay ay itinuro lang ang mga kapwa namin Pilipino. O ng mga tinatawag nilang makapili noon. Matapos na lang kunin si itay. Nang makuha na nila si itay, ako, ako yung sumunod nila. Tinuro nila ako. Matakot ako. Napayakap mo sa akin yung inay. Pero kahit nagaano pa kahit pinayakap ko, hindi, hindi kinaya ng nanay ko yung lahat. Yung pera sa nang mga hapon. Sobrang, sobrang lahat nila. Wala, wala. Kalaban-laban. At kaysa naman Pumiglas pa ako, lumaban pa ako. Wala eh. Hindi din naman kakayaan eh. Kaysa mapahamok pa sila yun eh. Sumama na lang ako. Hindi ko alam kung ano mangyayari sa akin ng araw. Hindi ko alam kung ano nasa isip ko. Pero, ang alam ko lang sobrang nakakakot. Dahil hindi ko alam kung nabubuhay pa ako. Wala, walang awa ang mga hapon. Wala silang kanakatawutan kahit sa inyo ako. Kahit sa inyo ayaw nilang patang. Tinulong nila ako sa isang kwarto. At tila isang bangungot pa rin hanggang ngayon. Narinig ko pa rin hanggang ngayon yung mga umol ng iba't ibang mga babae. Paano yung mga laruan na pinagpapasapasan? Gagamitin nila kami hanggang gusto nila kami gamitin. Wala silang pakialam. Gamit. Gamit na gamit kami. Hanggang ngayon, yung mga hawak nila, ramdam na ramdam ko pa din na para bang kahapon lang nangyari. At nung titiri ako ng sarili ko dahil nangyari yun. nakahagulan na sa isang lugar kung kung saan nila kami pinuesto, dun ko naisipan na tumakas na wala, walang ibang nasa is puro pagkakataon na yun ko di tumakbo nang tumakbo, wala akong pangayalam kung mahuli pa din ako basta ang kailangan ko kunin ng pagkakataon na makalaya sa kanila pero Wala nang ina yung patay na ako. Pero hindi ko na naabutan pa ang itay. Maging aking nobyo na isinama lang sa death march. Pinahirapan. Pinahirapan.
na ba yan? Wala mo lang habas sa pagpatay na ginawa ng mga hapon. <laughs> Hindi ka tagap-tagap yung mga nangyari sa akin noon. Bago pa man dumating ang gera sa pagitan ng mga hapon at ng mga Amerikano, mailig na ako sa mga babasayan. Halos isang buwan o isang taon din ang nakalipas bago nang bumalik ang sigla sa literatura. Mga literatura na sumasalamin sa kung papaanong buhay ang um, nakamta ng mga Pilipino nung panahon na nandito yung mga hapones. Yung mga bangungot namin, yung mga hindi namin masabi. Pero noong panahon nila, kaunti lang talaga ang mga nailimbag na libro noon. Noon kasi yung panahon ng mga hapones ay may ipit na pinagbabawal. Um, mga kahit anong babasahin na nasa wikang iglis, bawal din magsulat gamit ang wikang iglis. Daming Tagalog lang ang maaay. Sobrang hilig ko ang pagbabasa. Kahit na kapo sa pera, masasabi ko na yung pagbabasa ay nagkumpleto sa akin. Halos lahat ng mga babasahin matapos ang pananakop ng mga hapones ay tungkol sa mga mapait na karanasan namin noon. Mga bangungot na hanggang ngayon ay daladala pa rin sa aming mga alaala at Mapait ngunit magagandang mga obra maestra. Hindi ako marunong sa wikang English pero sinikap kong pag-aralan para maintindihan ko yung iba pang mga babasahin na naglalaman ng ganun uh, tema. There are a lot of great pieces that I such as Ginto sa Makili by Macario Pineda, which they call the first novel appeared after the World War II. Sugat ng Alaala by Lazaro Francisco. This reflects the horror of the war as well as the human capacity for the bounty, endurance, and love under the most extreme circumstances without seeing the dot by Stephen Haveliana, one fed a chaperone by Wilfredo Maria Guerrero. Lastly, The Babu Dancers by Nestor Vicente Madali Gonzalez, also known as NPM Gonzalez. This book, The Bamboo Dancers, and B.M. Gonzalez, is one of the great literary works during the post-war because it represents the both Western and Filipino influences in culture. I have noticed five literary themes such as romanticism, nationalism, independence, expression of feelings, and social realism. 
the previous war that happened had a great influence in the literature of this era. Sa lahat ng nakritikong stories, novels, poems, ang mga gawa noong post-war era ang isa sa pinakamahirap na nagawa ko as a critic because of its deep background and history. After the Philippines gained full independence in 1946, the Filipino writers have shown a remarkable degree of skills in expressing their ideas in foreign tongue, and most of them provide a striking insight into the lives and struggle of Filipinos. Since the main aim of the Filipino writers that time was to free themselves from the political and economic bondage, during the Japanese occupation, the English language was limited and prohibited. That's why many impressive new novelists, poets, and playwrights emerged after the war ended. After the war ended or during the post-war era, Filipinos have learned how to express themselves more confidently in terms of arts and literature. During that time, there are many writers who had been famous for their literary works since post-war poetry and fiction was dominated by English writers or those writers who train under American. Even the literature in the Tagalog-based national language could not avoid being influenced or even assimilated. But the Philippine novel, whether written in English or any native languages, has remained a social realist. Overall, after the war ended, writers who wants to publish their works emerge without fear. They use that independence to speak against the oppressor and many comfort women came out to tell their story of survival and writers during that time continue to fight until this day. Uh, since the middle of the 19th century in the Philippines, the major forms of Japanese literature have been tanka, haiku and shi, or western style poetry. But today, the main forms of Japanese literature include both experimental literature and literature that seeks to revive traditional ways. And it is the transitional period in the Philippine literature, from the American style to the modern style in Japanese literary works. The Japanese form of poetry, haiku, was also explored by Filipino writers during the occupation and additionally, short stories came more into fashion. Literature writing and Japanese literary works may sell them in their specific chosen form, although some active writers are eager to collaborate with poets in other genres. The history of the Philippine literary movement involves the evolution of Japanese as a language, and many popular works fell between pure literature and pulp novels, including all sorts of historical series, information packed docudramas, science fiction, mysteries, and war journals.
writer, I observed the world as distinctive and remarkable from one another and it captures those observations differently because of the Japanese art and literature. Para sa akin, hindi natin namamalayan na yung sakit, kalit, lungkot, o kahit nga nang maramdaman natin, maging ang mga sugat ng kahapon ay siyang makakagawa pala ng mas magagandang bagay. Yung mga kabagay na akala natin hanggang dun lang, mga bagay na hindi natin masabi, minsan mas mainam na ilahad sa pamagitan ng pagsusulat. After everything that they have said, we can conclude that the Japanese occupation heavily influenced the literature that we have now. We became more confident in expressing what we feel than solely thinking on how we could impress everyone through our pieces. Therefore, literature could be a tool to share what we can share and it speaks for us. Post-war literature reflects the aftermath of World War II. Post-war era is similar to morning dew whereas the sunlight or the masterpieces reflects its rays on raindrops or tears from the pain of the past. Post-war era brings the power to refresh, hope after the pain, and sunshines after the rain. With that, these are the papers of morning dew that will remain its value for a lifetime.